and talk and conversation that was happening um, just before we started. We have a beautiful time of worship to share together today. Uh, we have Elizabeth Ryman bringing us the message. We have Cindy Newberry bringing us some word about these beautiful quilts spread across our sanctuary, a tangible, soft way to send the love of God to little ones that need it. She's going to share a little bit more about that in a few minutes. Welcome to worship. Welcome to a time to be together and lay it all down and open up that God can fill our cups for whatever has happened and whatever things have been going on in our journey. So glad that you are here to worship God. Hey, tomorrow, Vacation Bible School starts. Woo, woo, woo. And you can still be a part. It's a, the, there's a UPC code on these VBS cards that are on the back tables. And if you would like to sign up, you can do that on the UPC code. If you would love to help out or be an extra, Ashlyn's back there in the back. Give us a wave. Just grab her and say, I want to be there to love on kids, to just walk around and pray, um, to be a part of VBS. So that is Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday nights, dinner at 530 and 6 to 8, our Vacation Bible School. Also, on these clipboards, um, the Ministry Center sign-up. Um, First Methodist helps with volunteering at the Ministry Center in August, and uh, the shifts are about three hours long, Monday, Wednesdays, or Fridays. And please uh, take a look on here and help out in August if you can, because it is a blessing to um, be there and help clients get food and clothing that they need. We are doing a, an art and spirituality um, workshop on Saturday, July 16th. Rita Wallinga and I are co-hosting it. It's called Tiny Cards, and it's basically tiny cards with big messages of love. So come and make some tiny greeting cards. We've got all kinds of materials to do it, um, and uh, make something lovely for yourself or someone else. That's Saturday, July the 16th, 9 to noon. It's even come and go. You don't have to block the whole time out. Uh, a quick promo for Shrek. Christine's got her Shrek t-shirt on. Today at 2 o'clock is the matinee and final performance of Shrek the Musical at Maryville High School Performing Arts Center. We've got a bunch of folks from our congregation that are involved, so uh, come on out at 2 o'clock and enjoy that. All right. Hey, there is joy in the house. Let's begin with our vintage joy rise to your feet in your body or spirit however you can lift up your face to heaven and as the acolytes come forward bringing the light of christ we thank you and bless you Two, three, four. <laughs>
hey, Jeff, I love it when you go, hey, hey. I feel like the spirit just like jumps up when Jeff goes, hey, hey. Oh, it's good to take a deep breath and just love on God some and let God love on us. God, the one who awakes our love. Walking through this life, feeling empty on the inside. Just when I thought my hope had died, you were there to bring me back to life. You, you awake my love, you renew my strength, you restore my heart. your story. And it's about bearing witness to God's story that's part of our story and ours that's entwined with God's. So we've been singing this Christmas song, Make Room, Make Room in Your Heart. Mother holds a promise tight. Every wrong will be made right. The road is straight, the burden is light. For in his hands he owes tomorrow. Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart for God to rise? Story. You can come as you are, it may set you apart, you may groove in your heart and trade your dreams for his glory. Make room in your heart, make room in your heart. Courage, uh, you may be seated. 
It takes courage to make room in our hearts for God, to write God's story, because it means we have to surrender, right? We have to hold things a little more open and loosely instead of holding on, gripping tight. But that's, my friends, when the miracle happens. I'd like to invite Cindy Newberry up to share with us about the quilts and then to pray a blessing over the quilters and the ones who will receive the quilts. Good morning. I'm a nine o'clocker, so it's really fun to come and see who's all here for the second service. Um, hi. <laughs> and I failed to remember what today is this morning, and I'd like to wish a big happy birthday to my friend in the balcony, Gina. <laughs> Yay! Happy birthday, Gina! <laughs> Um, I am part of the Community Quilters, which started in about 2014, and our own um, Liz Burnside's Rest Her Soul is the one who brought the idea to this church. She was in Joann's in St. Joe, and the lady's talking about buying fabric to make quilts for these kiddos at the Noise Home for Children. And Liz brought that back up here to Della Rhodes, and it's grown to, there's five or six of us, and I think they're all at first service. Christine is here, who's uh, joined us this year, who make these quilts um, and take them down to the noise home in St. Joe. These children come there for various reasons, whether it be parents are in jail or in rehab or homeless. There could be a, a lot of reasons why they would be there, but they come with nothing. So they get to pick out a quilt when they come so it's something that is theirs. It's a secure, it's a warmth for them to know that they have something. So that's part of our reason for our ministry is to share God's love in that way. Um, these little ones here, Peggy Wolford makes and puts the little animals with for the tiny ones. So um, I will take them down this week and we, I think we ended up with 91, I think, of oh, all of this, so yeah. So if, if you would care to help this ministry, you could always write a check to the church and put quilts on it. <laughs> put my little plug in there. So absolutely, anyway. absolutely. We, we would like to bless the quilters and bless the quilts. I invite you during our reflection time, as you come up to the altar, if you want to stand uh, um, and place your hand on one of the, the blankets or on one of the animals um, and pray a blessing, then I invite you to do that. Let's pray right now. If you, would, if you would and you're comfortable, would you extend your hand toward any soft, beautiful thing that has been made, um, and we will bless it all. Lord God, we give you thanks for the beautiful, soft fabric that fills and yarn that fills our sanctuary today. Eighty to ninety people will be blessed and know that prayers have been rising for them in whatever they're walking in. We ask your blessing upon the quilters and our love prayers and finances to go towards supporting the ministry. We ask that each young one who is wrapped in this quilt, who would have something of their very own, would know they are precious and loved. Thank you for this beautiful ministry and the way that your love is pouring out into those in need in our community through it. Continue it, strengthen it, support it, build it up, and all of it we pray joyfully and gratefully in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Testify, am I on? <laughs> uh, you know, um, I'm here to share before Wendy does pastoral prayer. Um, sometimes I think it's important for uh, pastoral leadership to speak to the things that are going on around us um, in our world and in our nation uh, for, the, for the fears that we have that rise up in us. Um, and Wendy said something very important uh, in that prayer for all these beautiful quilt, quilts that... Um, that we are, we are we as the church we as, as those who step into ministry we have the responsibility to walk with others in their time of need and so over the past few weeks when this conversation um, on abortion um, came about 
I think sometimes uh, we shy away. We don't want to talk about it from the pulpit, and we just hope that sometimes these conversations go away. But I want to come to you today. Um, as we come forward in our time of prayer and reflection, I want us to remember that we are the body of Christ. And I know you're here because you are a member of the body of Christ, and being a, body, being a member of the body of Christ is something that we do together and that we stand together. Um, last week I brought a uh, reading from the uh, book of, uh, of uh, social principles that comes out of our book of worship about peace with justice. And I want you to know, and, and I'm not going to read this, I want, you, I want to, you to go out and Google it and research it because I want to open the door for us to have conversation. But the 2016 uh, Book of Discipline has a section in it on social principles and paragraph 161K is about abortion and where the church stands on its thoughts and processes. And it really comes down to this understanding that the beginning of life and the ending of life are God-given boundaries that uh, are a part of our human existence. But it goes on to say that we are equally bound to respect one another and to walk together in relationship with one another. Because I want to tell you, friends, I would be wrong as your pastor if I closed the door on someone who needed to have the conversation about making a decision such as abortion, life-changing decisions. We are the church. We are the church of Jesus. Jesus, who was the most socially compassionate person that ever walked this earth human, yet divine, this Jesus, who we are to be like in his image. And we are to open the door wide open. We are not in the business of the church of closing doors and closing hearts and saying who can or cannot be a part of our journey together. We're writing stories, friends. And so I want to stand here today and I want to tell you that my heart has always been wide open for the possibility of conversation. Conversation and relationship, because I may not have stood in your shoes, but friends, I have empathy for a lot of things. And that empathy begins the relationship, when we can sit and we can listen to one another and we can decide together life-changing decisions and directions that we go. And it's not black and white. I don't know where we got to the point that these conversations are black and white. There is so much gray in the world, and I think Jesus would have stepped right in the middle of that gray and touched the hearts of everyone that he met, no matter what they were going through, no matter what circumstances and dilemmas they were facing, Jesus would walk with them. And I pray and I hope that we are a church, friends, that is willing to take away any judgment, to take away any opportunity of choosing sides, and look into the eyes of the people that we get to love together with in this community and hear what they have to say so that hope meets them at every corner they turn. I also want to say my office is always open for these difficult conversations. Whether it's on the side of human sexuality, whether it's on the side of abortion, and you don't have to agree with me and I don't have to agree with you, but my office is that place of love. This church is a place of love where we should be able to, over the past couple of years, we've experienced the opportunity to come together exploring where we stand on difficult conversations, and we are making it and we are surviving. So the call of my heart to you all is, let's keep moving through the journey that we have together. God has placed us all right here for a purpose. May we all live that purpose to the fullest as we walk together with one another in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You bow your hearts in prayer with me.
holy mystery, this is sanctuary. It is safe, a safe place. It is reprieve from the storm. It is brothers and sisters coming together to love one another. God, you see and know us. You have created us. We are rich. We are diverse. Our ideas, our convictions are wide and deep and strong and colorful. And you don't ask us to all agree on everything. That's not what you preached. But you do ask us to love one another well. And when we look in one another's eyes, we are so much better at loving each other well. So make us a people willing to have the hard conversations. To be present with one another. To listen to one another. May respect for all be the way that we live. May grace for the other who is different than us be the way that we speak. May joy and hope be the song we sing over one another because we are all just making our way and doing the best that we can. And you're a God that's right in the midst of us making that journey, loving us as we go. And that's the most important thing. So wherever we are today, in joy, in grief, in anger, in frustration, in lethargy, um, in tiredness, um, in silliness, wherever we are, thanks that you're there with us and you're here with us. We give you our glory, our thanks, and our praise because it is due to your name for who you are and what you do in our lives. May we be bold to bear witness to that and tell our story and how you're a part of it. In the name of Jesus, we ask it. Amen.
some prayer over us and it makes my heart so happy to know that you have just sprinkled music into all of these quilts and blankets what a beautiful spirit moment thank you both so much good morning today's scripture reading is from Luke 8 verses 40 to 56, where a girl is restored to life and a woman is healed. Now when Jesus returned, the crowd welcomed him, for they were all waiting for him. Just then there came a man named Jairus, a leader of the synagogue. He fell at Jesus' feet and began pleading with him to come to his house, for he had an only daughter, about 12 years old, and she was dying. As he went, the crowds pressed in on him. There was a woman who had been suffering from a flow of blood for 12 years, and though she had spent all she had on physicians, no one could cure her. She came up behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak, and immediately her flow of blood stopped. Then Jesus asked, who touched me? When they all denied it, Peter said, Master, the crowds are hemming you in and pressing against you. But Jesus said, someone touched me, for I noticed that power had gone out from me. When the woman realized that she could not remain hidden, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared in the presence of all the people why she had touched him, and how she had been immediately healed. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. While he was still speaking, someone from the synagogue leader's house came and said, Your daughter is dead. Do not trouble the teacher any longer. When Jesus heard this, he replied, Do not be afraid. Only believe, and she will be saved. When he came to the house, he did not let anyone, he did not allow anyone to enter with him except Peter, John, and James, and the child's father and mother. Everyone was weeping and grieving for her, but he said, 
do not cry, for she is not dead, but sleeping. And they all laughed at him, knowing that she was dead. But taking her by the hand, he called out, Child, get up. Her spirit returned, and she stood up at once, and he directed them to give her something to eat. Her parents were astounded, but he ordered them to tell no one what had happened. God works in many amazing ways. Back in April, I had planned plans. God works, God works in many in amazing, amazing ways. ways. Back in, Back April, in April, I had plans to, to take a classroom, classroom walk off and repurpose it for my Eagle project. project. To fit in a special, special education, education classroom, classroom, classroom for kids, kids with, with special needs. Special needs. Sunday, Sunday, June 5th, 5th Jenny, Jenny Walsh shares information, information, information about, about projects needing need to be done at the Weston Center. Center. On Tuesday, June 7th, the Loft Project fell through. A talk with Pastor Kim produced a lot more information about the Weston Center needs. Kim got us connected, connected with Sim, Sim, Cindy, Cindy Newberry, Newberry, and we met, we met and, and a whole painting, painting project, project was discussed. discussed. Later, later <laughs> Tuesday, Tuesday, Cindy texted Cindy text text another great idea. idea. So Wednesday, so Wednesday June 8th, a, a, a new project, project was shared. Shared. painting into a room. room. Cindy, Cindy got, us got us the paint, paint. Uh, on, on Friday, Friday morning, morning, June 10th, June 10th the first day, day we started painting at 1 p.m. More helpers came than expected, and we got ahead of schedule. Saturday, Saturday, June 11th, 11, 11, again, we had many, many helpers, helpers, and the project, and the project wrapped, wrapped up two, two hours, hours early. early. Tuesday, Tuesday, June 14th, 14th we finished, finished um, um, the Eagle, Eagle project, project, my scout, scout paperwork, paperwork, and we're ready, and we're ready, for, ready for my board, board, board review. review. The project, the project was, decided was decided upon on, on June, June 8th. 8th. The paint, the paint was, dry was dry by June 11th. 11th. All the scout paperwork, paperwork was turned in by June 14th, and on June 18th, I went before the scout board review. God not, God not only works, works in amazing, in amazing ways, ways, he works, he works over, time. over time. Good morning. Jonah's right. God works in many ways, and he works over time, too. He doesn't leave you alone. Jesus is seen as the big miracle worker. But the other important piece to that is you're a miracle worker to someone. I know I had a very special confirmation teacher who encouraged me the first time I did this. Now I'm back. I had plenty of people encourage me, and I had lots of positive feedback, so now I'm back. How many of you think that you are a miracle worker in someone's life? One, two, three, okay. All of you should have had your hands raised because someone, you are always a miracle worker to someone. It may not look that way, it may not be apparent right away, but you are. Because you're special to someone, and that someone is special to you. Because they have something to teach you, you have something to teach them. You have a story to share, which is your testimony. God gave you that story to share it, and he will tell you when, where, and how. He'll not, he'll, he's not going to leave you in the dark about when, where, and how. For some people, it's the beautiful quilt that sit in front of us. For some people, it's sharing the story of an important project that they did. Some people, it's volunteering at the ministry center. For others, it's reading scripture. For some, it may be preaching. Everyone has a different way. Because I'm going to preach a little bit differently than Pastor Kim would or Pastor Wendy. But that's because we all have something to teach. And sometimes people have to hear it in different ways to learn it. 
and actions can speak louder than words, especially for the kids at the noise home who are going to receive these. You can say you are loved and that you're welcome and you're safe here, but they may not fully believe that because of their situation. And then you hand them this quilt and you say, this is yours to keep, take it with you everywhere. That provides a sense of they actually do care. <coughs> oh, that was loud. Your story is important, and God will tell you what that story and that testimony is. You just have to look and listen. I think we forget to listen. So we need to slow down and listen, because it's not always loud and clear what he has to say. Sometimes he's just telling you. Not everybody needs to know, just you. So you have to stop and listen. And that's important. Because once you stop and listen, you can then go and share. And the more we share, the more people we have, the bigger we grow, the stronger we are, and the louder the message becomes. God gave you a testimony. You just have to look and listen. You're writing a story with him. So share it with people. Don't, don't think that your story is any less important than anybody else's. Because it's just as important. Everybody has something to share and teach. So every day, go out and teach somebody something new. Because God gave you skills for a reason, to teach somebody and that's important. Just look and listen. And he'll give you the words to do. He'll give you the words to say, the actions to do. And it will all fall in place. that we do all have a story and that God wants to use our stories. Hold 
things are gonna get better things are gonna get better i know it's hard hold on love things are gonna get better things are gonna get better i know they are hold on love things are gonna get better Things are gonna get better, I know it's hard. Hold on, love. Things are gonna get better. Things are gonna get better, I know they are. Do 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 do. Friends of God, let us go out with joy for young people with a passion for Christ in their hearts, for brothers and sisters, and for the stories we have to tell one another. Let us go in joy and hope. Amen. Amen. They say